I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. Hi everybody, so here we are, midweek video, and yes, there is a monster montage. Oi! I had so much fun doing it. Not gonna lie. It was just what I needed. It was as much as doing the presentation for you as it was for me and the exposure therapy. It was a bit of a whew, looking at 104 photographs but I needed to do it. I needed to do it. So last night I had trouble sleeping. I did. And I woke up six o'clock this morning. I know I slept. I did sleep. I've had enough sleep because I woke up bright as a button. But I, I really wanted to talk about where I was six months ago compared to where I am now up here. I think it's important because there have obviously been a lot of non-scale victories. Obviously. Can't dispute that. For you, those that have been here from day dot, you've heard it. You've seen it. It's all there. But I'd be very remiss if I didn't actually put those things and how I felt and where I was six months ago into this video. So we are going to talk about how I used to think six months ago with poor mental health, brain fog and everything else in between. I thought about where it mostly came from and it didn't matter how many layers I peeled back, it all boiled down to one thing and that was confinement and the emotional restrictions that come from that. You know, you, you sort of sit there and you're like, oh. And you have this inner dialogue going on inside your brain and it's, it's, it's a battle and a half. It's vile. It is just vile. So, you know, it, it left me feeling like I couldn't argue. I couldn't run. I couldn't move because I, I, I mean, you know, when you're having an argument with somebody, you, you sometimes you like to do the whole dramatic storm off kind of thing. And that's your statement of, well, this discussion is over. I couldn't do that. I was stuck sitting there taking it and it was an onslaught. And when you're physically stuck, you're emotionally stuck as well. And you, at that time, I lacked the emotional skills to be able to deal with any of it. It was just full stop. So, you know, that confinement left me feeling, well, who am I to argue? Let's just get a conclusion to this now and give them what they want to the detriment of my own silent screams in here. So where did that lead? On an emotional level, for me, that led straight down the path of a self-destructive frustration. And for me, that presented as anger at everything. Like, I mean, everything. Not an easy thing to deal with and all from confinement. So, you know, that path just kept going. It continued on and on and on. And meanwhile, downward spiral. It left me feeling like I couldn't be a good friend to anybody. I couldn't be a good wife. I couldn't be a good mother. 
which then follows on to it made me feel like I, I'm I'm not worth it. I, I I'm fat. I'm ugly. And I I just didn't feel attractive to my own husband. You know, and all of those things, it just led to me being an absolute pushover. I would just take it. I'd get manipulated and I would just take it. I was so foggy, I couldn't see what was going on. So if you take that into consideration, where the house is concerned here with my family, that meant my poor husband had to take over just pretty much all the parental duties. He had to take it all on because I was in no fit mental state to take any of it on. And not only did he have to do that, he had to deal with watching his wife getting manipulated and keeling over and giving in to everything and everyone around me. So it's got to be acknowledged that that must have been just absolutely vile for him. And so, of course, you know, now there's that struggle. It's like I have to reassure him. It's okay. I've got this. When something happens with the kids, I'm like, it's all right, Mr. Pet, relax. I've got this. But, yeah, he had to take it all on for years. And, dang, I mean, I, I had no self-worth. And I honestly sat here thinking I ha I was not entitled to have any kind of life whatsoever. I mean, I, I'm, I'm ashamed to say that I, I actually felt like my family was better off with me not being here, that I should just leave. Because all I could see was that my involvement was creating chaos. And that any time my husband was actually sorting something out, it seemed to run smoothly. So I'm like, well, what's the point of me being here? What is the point? So I may as well just leave and let and give them the house, give them everything and just go. I mean, I didn't know where, but that's, that's, that's where I was. That's where I was. Because I felt like I was the source of, of everything wrong in their lives. I felt like I was the cause of all their misery. So what does that look like now, six months later, given the fact that there's better mental health, I have less brain fog. What, what does that look like now? I'm going to tell you, the confinement is now turning into confidence. I mean, I am moving more and better. The pain is easing, obviously. But that confinement is now turning around and becoming confidence. And <laughs> confidence means I do argue. Yeah, because I can move. It's not to say that we have an argument and I go, well, this conversation is over. And then I storm off. No, I don't mean that. I am present emotionally and mentally to have said discussion or argument. And because I've got that clarity, I'm having the kinds of discussions that my poor kids have never heard from me before. Uh, bless their little cotton socks. Uh, I can see things that they say and that they do. For example, I'm like, oh yeah, I know what's going on here. <laughs> oh, hell no, not on my watch. And as opposed to actually remaining silent, I'll, I'll say, let me just tell you what I saw you just do. Just so we're all on the same page. And, and they will be like, and I, uh, yeah, I'm onto it. I'm onto it. It also means that because I've got that, con you know, that that little bit of confidence now, I I don't feel like I'm as self-destructive. I mean, because there's there's less frustration because I'm everything's I'm speaking, 
I'm confident enough to speak. And so that means I'm less angry. I, I the, the anger part I'm still working on. Mm. But it's a work in progress, just like a lot of things in life, but there is less. The anger is not as much pure anger and frustration anymore. It's like a, I'm not putting up with this. That's where the anger is. I'm like, no, I'm not putting up with this. Oh, heck no. And I'll let it out. It's like, no, this is not going to remain silent. I'm not going to lock this away in here. I'm not going to lock this away up here. Boom. It's going to get said. So, you know, I'm standing up for myself as a person and as a wife and a mother, you know, and because I, I know I'm worth it. I do. I know that I'm worth it. You know, I may be fat, but, you know, like my husband said, doesn't matter. You're doing something about it. You are actively doing something about it. And I am. You know, I. it's making me feel a little bit of beauty inside. And when that beauty comes in, from inside, then it shows. It, it has to, surely. I'm not saying that I'm gorgeous or anything. I'm not ready to walk down a cat well, model, modeling thingy, you know. I couldn't walk like that if I tried anyway, just quietly. But, you know, the, 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 it's, a, it's a beauty inside and you've, you've got to feel that for yourself first. I mean, it was only a matter of like maybe weeks ago that I looked in the mirror. It was a weigh-in morning. I looked, I, looked like, I looked like the wreck of the Hesperus when I wake up, just so we're clear. But, you know, I looked in the mirror. It was maybe about three weeks ago. And I looked at myself and for the first time in it, I just don't know how long. I can't even remember. I looked in the mirror and went, huh, you know what, kid? You're doing all right. You're looking good. I actually gave myself a bleating compliment. Like I said, can't remember when I last did that. And that would only come from starting to feel something inside for yourself, some self-worth, some confidence, some love for yourself. Yeah, I, I have some self-worth now and I know that I am entitled to a life. And I know that everyone's happiness is their own responsibility, which means there's no need to run anymore, even if I could, but there's no need. Because everybody's happiness is their own responsibility. And to be in that position of feeling like you're the source of everyone's misery, that's a dark place. Dang, that is a dark, dark place. I mean, I was scared to disrupt the peace because I thought I was the cause of the war. But I wasn't. I, n I never was, you know. Because the war was in here. The war was up here. And it, it had nothing to do with my family, my friends, because the war was just all within me. And that is one of the reasons, one of the reasons why I'm doing this for me. And that's why I say <laughs> the buck stops with me me. So <laughs> now to that monster montage. Well, sit back, enjoy. Cue the monster montage.
So yes, trust the process. At the end of the day, I am still OMAD. Now, some may go, oh, poo, 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 on that. Some have. But I am somebody that's on a rather large health journey here. It's not like I've got a small amount to lose here. I am OMAD because I know that works for my current level of activity. I know for a fact that is going to change. So I'm adopting the whole, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If I'm hungry, I will eat. I'm damned if I'm going to force feed myself to eat something and consistently eat just to train my body to eat more when I I honestly just can't. I'm not into force feeding here. I, I don't know what they call it, priming or something. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but I'm not forcing myself to have more than one meal a, one meal a day when I'm at this current level of activity. I'm going to leave that for those that are running marathons, going for walks in the park and doing all sorts of other things and leading a much more active life. I'm going to leave that to those professionals. <laughs> they can do them. I'm going to do me. This is working for me. I'm not suffering for it. I'm doing fine. So we're just going to leave that one alone. I'm going to continue to learn. Obviously, I feel that if you can sit back and say, well, I've learned everything I need to know. Oh, I was a bit hasty. I was just a little bit hasty if you say that. We should always endeavor to learn. And, you know, like I said in my last video, always endeavor to learn and always try to improve by 1% every day. You can only try, but if you can sit back at the end of your day and go, well, I learned something today. I learned that today. Then you're on the good part of it. You know what I mean? Always try to learn. And I'm going to continue to learn as much as I can. I am also going to be suffering fools an awful lot less. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. I'm not doing that. What I'm doing for myself here is completely separate and has nothing to do with my husband, my kids, or my parents, the world I was brought up in, or even the archives that I'm going to be transferring. It's got nothing to do with it. So I'm not going to allow the lines to be blurred here. Not for anything. And not by anyone. Mm -mm. Not playing that game. So I'm just not putting up with that. I'm getting more structure in my day. My husband's working. I get up earlier. I go to bed a little bit earlier. I'm structuring my day like a work day teaching myself those things because I mean it's e well easy uh, I suppose when you've got a job nine to five job you get up in the morning you have your shower you go to work you go on your public transport or you drive to work but to have the discipline to be able to get out of bed do what I need to do for myself my vibration plate you know have my come out here have my laptop out here have me coffee and work for myself, have that discipline to work for myself and have structured days on the things that I'm going to do on any given day. That's called being your own boss, taking control of your life. And that is what I'm doing. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> this is a carnivore channel. We know this. But it is an odyssey. And an odyssey usually indicates a journey, mostly by ship, if I'm being honest. When I think of the word odyssey, I always think of journey by ship across the oceans. And whether the waters be calm or choppy, it's an odyssey, a journey. And at the end of the day here, 
I have spent six months trying to learn how to captain my own ship. I don't think I'm doing too badly. Because isn't that what it's about? To learn how to captain your own ship? Be in charge of your own life? And to have a life to navigate in the first place. What I had six months ago was about as far removed from having a life as you could possibly get. Now I've got hope that I will have one. I'm starting to have one. We are getting there. It's a work in progress, like a lot of things in life. I've got a long way to go and I ain't going anywhere. Imagine if you will. I have to go shopping one day and get a new wardrobe. Oh dear, what a pity. I'll have to maybe go live or record some footage so that I can share that with you. Yeah. What if in years to come, I end up having surgery to remove all the jelly rolls? You think I'm not going to document that? <laughs> A good deal of you should know me well enough by now to know that, oh, yeah, I'll be documenting every darn second of that so that I can share it with you. It would give me so much joy to be able to take you on that journey with me of all the things that I'm going to experience. And I know for a fact that you guys are going to revel in that. and be so happy for me. Why wouldn't I want to share that with a community of people here, my subscribers? Why wouldn't I? Of course I would. I don't care if I'm doing footage of me walking down the road or if I'm getting on an aeroplane to go to London. You lot are coming with me. Period. End of story. So. One of the phrases I use in this house quite a bit nowadays is buckle up buttercups because this is going to get freaky. I can see a life for myself that I never thought possible six months ago, but I can see it. It's going to happen. I want it and I shall have it. I'm entitled to have it. So yeah here we are jumping into the next six months worth on that note i am going to ask you to be kind to those around you protect your peace don't take any crap i mean really don't take any crap please but be kind to yourself. The hardest one of all is being kind to yourself. It's really hard. Until Monday, Sunday for some of you, but until Monday, have a fantastic weekend. I do genuinely love each and every one of you. Please take care. And I'll speak to you on Monday.